Hello, everybody, and welcome to Episode 4 of Building and Detailing the Monogram Ravel 148 Scale B25J. In Episode 4, we're going to take a comprehensive look at construction of the engine nacelles, the engines, and the attachment of the engine nacelles to the wings. The Quick Boost Resin R2600 engines offer a lot more surface detail than the kit's engines. However, they were designed for the Accurate Miniatures B25, which has slightly larger cowlings, so we're going to need to modify the monogram cowlings and slightly reduce the diameter of the resin engines. The resin pour plugs were removed by wet sanding on a stationary piece of sandpaper. And then, the remaining paper-thin resin was removed with the tip of a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade. The locator rings for the kit's engines needed to be removed so that the resin engines would sit flush against these parts. Because the resin engines have a slightly larger diameter, the inside of the engine cowlings needed to be slightly increased in size. So I used a number 11 X-Acto plate to carefully scrape layers of plastic off and then smooth the plastic with different grades of sandpaper. I also use a sanding stick to remove just a small amount of the tops of the cylinder heads on the resin engine so that they would fit snugly inside of the cowlings. And as you can see, the fit looks pretty good, so we're ready to move on to the next step. The propeller shafts on the resin engines have a smaller diameter than the openings on the propellers, so I super glued plastic rod into the propeller openings and then re-drill them to the proper diameter. Now the resin engines look great inside the cowlings and the propellers fit perfectly. The molded on exhaust ports on the engine cowlings were opened up with the number 11 X-Acto blade and a set of micro rod files. The small separate exhaust ports were also opened up with a micro file and then carefully glued into place. The cowling flaps on a B25 had a little bit of open space between them, so I used a small razor saw and very slowly removed the excess plastic between the cowling flaps. Use a sanding stick to remove the punch outs on the back side of these cowling parts so that they'll fit snugly onto the engine nacelles. With the preliminary engine work complete, now it's time to start working on the nacelles. The tape up of the engine nacelles showed that the forward surface detail lined up pretty well on both sides, but the back surface detail is going to need a little bit of work to get it to line up. The nacelle engine halves were taped together tightly and a tiny bead of super glue was applied all along the seam line. There were also some surface depressions and I filled those with tiny strips of plastic that I super glued into place. To reinforce the seams, I superglued tiny strips of plastic along the inside of the seam line. I protected the surface detail with masking tape, and then I scraped along the seam line with a number 11 X-Acto blade holding at about a 45 degree angle, and then I sanded the seam line smooth. I restored the panel line detail and the line for the landing gear doors with my scribing tool and then, using a super fine section of steel wool, I polished the plastic smooth. To square up the edges on the nacelle opening for the landing gear, I super glued tiny strips of plastic in place. I then carefully trimmed them and blended them into the surface with a sanding stick. Another technique for gluing the engine nacelle halves together is to not run that super glue bead line along the seam where the landing gear bay doors close, so that you don't have to rescribe that line. I then used silver paint to check the seam lines and the surrounding areas to ensure there were no flaws. The tape ups of the two engine nacelles to the wings showed voids on both sides of each engine nacelle and the surfaces on the engine nacelles where they attached to the wings were slightly raised. So we're going to fill the voids with tiny strips of plastic super glued into place and then carefully contour the edges of the nacelles into the wings. 
The voids between the engine nacelles and the wings were slightly different at each attachment point, and so different lengths and thicknesses of strips of plastic were carefully slipped into place and then superglued on both sides so that there would be a very strong bond. The small sections where no plastic was required received several coats of superglue to fill the tiny voids. The surface detail was protected with masking tape and then different grades of sandpaper were wrapped around lengths of balsa wood and then the surfaces were wet sanded smooth. Each area then received a coat of silver paint to check for flaws and super glue was reapplied where necessary and then the process of sanding was repeated until the flaws disappeared. The connection points on the upper part of the wings required several layers of super glue and then I used both a flexophile and sanding sticks to wet sand the surfaces smooth and then checked them with silver paint. To get a better fit at the engine cowling section, I flattened out the surface of the forward engine nacelles. The tiny gaps on the upper surface were filled with strips of plastic super glued in place on both sides and then the excess plastic was removed with the tip of a number 11 X-Acto blade. The larger strips of plastic are spacers so that the resin engines would have a positive seating against the nacelles. Masking tape was applied around the seam lines to protect the surface detail and then the seams were sanded smooth by wet sanding them with sanding sticks. Each seam line received a coat of silver paint to check for flaws and the process of applying super glue, sanding it smooth and using silver paint again was repeated until the flaws disappeared. I hope you enjoyed episode 4. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and we want to take this opportunity to thank Ben Sound for the copyright free music. Don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com and happy scale modeling.